ढोलन तेरा खो प्रभु नानक दे कर हाथ डंडौत बंधन अनक बार सर्व कला समराथ डोलन तेरा खो प्रभु नानक दे कर हाथ मैं नाही कछ हो नाही किच आहे न मोरा अवसर लज्जा राख ले हो सदना जन तोरा जी मैं नाही कछ हो नाही किच आहे न मोरा अवसर लज्जा राख ले हो सदना जन तोरा कबीरा मरता मरता जग मुआ मर पे न जान कोए ऐसी मरनी जो मरे बहर न मरना होए ऐसी मरनी जो मरे बहर न मरना होए वाहे गुरु जी का खालसा वाहे गुरु जी की फतेह with the blessings of guru granth sahib ji maharaj we are all seated here together in sangati roop to remember one of the greatest events that has taken place in our pant to remember the shaheed of that event to remember and to learn as a sikh from what took place on that day in the year 1921 100 years ago sangat ji 100 saal pehla di gall a when punjab when india was still under the rule of the british a great massacre a great sakka took place which is called the sakka in kana sahib and today as sangat is sada farz banda it's our duty as a sikh a responsibility of a sikh to learn the sakya to learn the itihas of not just our guru but after the guru period and many a times including me as well we are very aware of the sikh itihas from the time of guru nanak dev ji until the time of guru gobind singh ji even up to the time of baba banda singh bahadur in itni jankari sade kol hai gi hai गुरु नानक देव जी तो लेके गुरु गोबिंद सिंह जी तक जो इतिहास साडे को पंजाबी स्कूल के गुरुद्वारे के पोथियाँ जेडे साडे को घरे है वी रीड दिस इतिहास बट वट हैपन्स आफ्टर दैट डूरिंग द खालसा राज डूरिंग द पीरियड ऑफ द मिसल शहीद द मिसल पीरियड 
I ask myself this question that lead that lead me to this learning was that where does Pai Taru Singh Ji, Pai Mati Das Ji, Baba Deep Singh Ji, which part of the Sikh history do they fit? Were they during the same time as the Guru Saiban? Were they after that during the time of Baba Banda Singh Bahadur? What about Nawab Kapoor Singh? What about Sardar Jassa Singh Aluwalia? Where do these people fit in the Sikh history? And if we look at our Sikh Ithas, there's so much tat, there's so much essence. Even during the time after the Guru Saiba, until the current period. So today we are going to look at Saka Nankana Saib. This year marks the 100th year of the great massacre that took place in Nankana Saib which is the birthplace of Guru Nanak Dev Ji. That at the birthplace of Guru Nanak Dev Ji, Sikhs have given shahidi. Blood has been shed at the same place where Guru Nanak Dev Ji was born. Yes, it did happen. And this year we are remembering that. This incident took place on the 20th of February, 1921. And we can't just discuss or go through the history of that day itself. If we look at the Itihas of Saka Champor, Saka Sarhan, we have to look back a few months before, even a year before, to see what happened before, what led to this day to come. What led Guru Sahib to leave Anandapur and then that journey, then coming to Tamkor and Sarhanda and all those shahidiyan to take place. Similarly, with Sakan and Kanasa, we can't just look at the day of 20th February and say that ah, kuch hoya. Then we wouldn't be able to understand why this Saka took place. What led to this day of 20th February? So, we are going to be doing or going through a presentation in this katha that will help you to visualize, to understand what led to the Saka. Then we will go through on what happened in the Saka and the aftermath of it. What is it the Panta can learn from that Saka Nankana Sai? It is very important, Sangaji, to understand how did the Gurdwara management was during the time of the Guru or even throughout our Sikh Itihas? Because this Saka Nankana Sahib is very much related to the Gurdwara management system in our Sikh Itihas, in our Panth. During the time from Guru Nanak Dev Ji up till Guru Amar Das Ji, they started a system of Manjiya. So we must have heard in our Sikh Itihas where Guru Amar Das Ji set up Bai Manjiya. You can call them basically a Taramsala or a simpler version of a Gurdwara where that would, be this, that would be the place where Sikhs get together and the person in charge of that Manji would be doing Sikhi Parchar, would be collecting this one and so on. Then we also know that during this period was when Guru Amar Das Ji prepared Parcharaks, both men and women Parcharak. After that, we can see that the Masanda system came in during the time of Guru Ram Das Ji, Guru Arjan Dev Ji, right up till Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji. The Masands were more, I would say, like if we want to put it in the current times, the, a manager of a Gurdwara, right? Or someone, or even a treasurer. So there's a lot of roles involved of a masand doing parjar of Sikhi. So it's a granti Singh as well, but also managing the swanda. So he's a treasurer as well, collecting money from the sangat and making sure that that money goes to the golak of the guru. Now things were very fine with the masand system. Everything was going very well until the time of the 8th, 9th, and 10th Guru especially, where the system got very corrupted. Why? 
this is a very important thing to understand Sangaji and I want you to relate to how things are happening in the current times as well. Masanda got very corrupted because they thought that they had the power in them to control the Sangat in the area that they were handling Parchar, to take control of the money of the Sangat and not even reporting back to the Guru. So sometimes the money that the Sangats have given to the Guru, to the Masanda, do not even reach the Guru. Sikhi Parchar to Ult Hogi, they were not even doing Parchar of Sikhi based on the teachings of the Guru. And what happened, Sangaji? Many of us might not know this, but it was during the time of Guru Gobind Singh Ji where the Masanda system was abolished. Guru Gobind Singh Ji even sent out Hukam Names to all the Sangat, telling them not to trust the Masanda and whichever Masands were in that area outside, they were all caught and brought into the Darbar of Guru Gobind Singh Ji and they were boiled in oil. So, it happened in Itihas. Itihas mentions that Guru Gobind Singh Ji boiled all this Masanda in oil. Why? Because of, of, because of the corruption that they were doing. Because they have broken so much faith of the Sangat. The Sangat which was so grieved, ek ek dana paise da, ek ek paisa katha karke guru nu dena, dana katha karke guru nu dena. But then they were corrupted and they got very selfish. So now that system was over. Then Guru Gobind Singh Ji wrote Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj, which means that the Granthi system is now coming in. There's Gurdwaras being made. And this was the time when Guru Gobind Singh Ji, I would mention this later as well, but they have left Anandpur Sahib. So this was re in relation to Saka Chamkor Sahib. And at that time, Gurdwara Sahib has already been established. Gurdwara Seas Ganj Sahib, Gurdwara Rakab Ganj Sahib, where Guru Tegh Bahadiri's head was cremated and their body was cremated. And those Gurdwaras that were established during the time of the Guru, like Govindavar Sahib, they were all then given to the, to the Mahans, the Udasis, to take care. But still, we'll look at the table. You can see that Pai Mani Singh Ji, this was after the time of Guru Gobind Singh Ji, when the Panther was being led by Mata Sundari Ji, Mata Sahib Devan Ji in Delhi, when they ordered Pai Mani Singh Ji to become the head Granthi of Sri Darbar Sahib. Such Khan Sri Darbar Sahib, Haramandir Sahib in Amritsar. And when after that, very important period, a lot of Jangajud started happening in the Panth, which means Sikhs had to go into hiding. So there was very less organization of the Gurdwaras, of the Taramsales in the Panth. This was when the Masanda system, sorry, the Udasi system was introduced. Now, who are Udasiya? We will look into that a bit later as well. The Udasis, they oversee the management of the Gurdwaras and they were called Mahanta. So like how now in a Gurdwara, we call the person who takes care of Guru Granth Sahib Ji, does the seva of Guru Granth Sahib Ji, is called a Granthi Singh. And then do, it was during the period of Maharaja Ranjit Singh Ji, you can see that a lot of changes took place. A lot of Gurdwaras were being built as well. Itihasa Gurdwara was being built as well. Then after Maharaja Ranjit Singh Ji, which is during this time of Sakan and Kana Sahib, during the British period, British Raj, when they took over Punjab, took over India, they started taking control of the Gurdwaras. And they got hand in hand with the Mahans to control the Gurdwaras. Why? We will discuss that a bit later as well. And then, just like any system, there's always faults. Hana? Pullen under sabko a pull guru kartar that everybody makes mistakes. So how just like how the Masanda system was corrupted and Guru Gobind Singh Ji abolished that system, similarly the Mahanta system of the Udasya also got corrupted during the British period, even before that. And this period of 1920 to 1925 was was a very important movement to stop or take back the Gurdwaras from these Mahans. And this was when the Gurdwara reform movement started 
and the formation of a very well-known established Sikh organization that we all know worldwide, SGPC, Shromani Gurdwara Prabhantak Committee was started. So this period, Sangaji, this Saka, this great Shahidi period they were talking about the movement is a very important period in our Pant. It's a turning point actually. So Nankana Sahib, like I mentioned earlier, is the birthplace of Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji. Before the partition of, uh, of India in 1947, Punjab was in a shape of a butterfly. If you look at the images of Punjab before the partition, you would see that it was so huge. And all these Gurdwaras came under Punjab. But then after partition, now Guru Nanak Dev Ji's birthplace, Sri Nankana Sahib, comes under Pakistan. So now let's look into the Udasi sect. Who are these people? Why were the Gurdwara management given to them? So the Udasis, the lineage of Udasis was started by Baba Sri Chandi, which is the son of Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji. Now Sangaji, do not think that just because Guru Nanak Dev Ji's sons did not get the Gurgaddi, that they were not worthy, they were Kaputta, or they were not even worthy to be called the sons of the Guru. No, we must never even look down on the children of the Gurus, even though they were not given Gurgati. In fact, all the children of all the Guru Saiban, they were all respected by the next Gurus. So the sons of Guru Amar Das Ji were respected by Guru Ram Das Ji. So Baba Sri Chand was also blessed by Guru Nanak Dev Ji. Guru Nanak Dev Ji mentioned that your lineage will also grow. And that's when Baba Sri Chandi, they started the Pant of Udasis. So Udasis, how are they different from Sikhs? Udasis, they are more like ascetic people. They do not really follow the Sikhi principles, but they have faith. They believe in Guru Nanak Dev Ji. So Amrit Ni Shakade, they don't take Amrit. They don't wear the Khalse Bane. They wear Pagwe Kapre, like more orangey, red color clothing. And some Udasis, you will see that they are bold. Some Udasis, they, they, they are different sects even under the Udasi um, category. So they do actually follow a lot of Hindu ritual if you want to look at it as well. So uh, Puja, Kardia and so on. Despite having different um, practices and ritual, Udasi sects during the time of the Guru Saiban, they maintain a very good relationship with all the Guru Saiban. Baba Sri Chand even came to meet Guru Ram Das Ji. And Guru Ram Das Ji apna dada leke. We know Guru Ram Das Ji has a very long dada prakash. Guru Ram Das Ji took their dada and they wiped the feet of Baba Sri Chand because they were the son of Guru Nanak Dev Ji. And, but after that was when a lot of corruption started taking place during the Khalsa Raj. So, for example, like I mentioned earlier, when Guru Gobind Singh Ji's period, when they have abolished the Masan system, and after that, the, the Jangaju Dvela started. So, Guru Gobind Singh Ji had to leave Anandapur Sahib. At that point, before leaving Anandapur Sahib, Itihas Vachar likhya that Guru Gobind Singh Ji first went to Gurdwara Seas Ganj, where Guru Teg Bahadur Ji's head was cremated, and they did Ardas over there. All time day, Guru Gobind Singh Ji actually gave the duty to take care of this Gurdwara to Mahant Gurbaksh and told him that you are going to stay here and make sure that you take care of this Gurdwara. Of course, at that time, there was no Sarup of Guru Granth Sahib Ji, but the seva given was to ensure that the Jyot in that Gurdwara is always lit. Jyot kadi bujjani ni chayidi. There was a seva given to the Mahant. And Mahant Kirpal Das was one of the Mahant who actually fought along, alongside Guru Gobind Singh Ji in the Battle of Pangani, the first battle ever fought by Guru Gobind Singh Ji. Mahant Kirpal Das and his people, they fought together. So, Ozvele bought Kathe Hunde Sige. Things just started changing after that. So, after the time of Guru Gobind Singh Ji, there was a period of warfare. Janga Jutta Vela Shuru Hogesi. 1469 to 1708 was a Guru period. After that, we had the Khalsa Raj under Baba Banda Singh Bahadur, where they fought, they fought with the Mughals, they seek justice, they took back Sarhand, and that was the time you can see that Sikhs, the Khalsa has taken over a lot of major cities in India. After Banda Singh Bahadur, after Baba Banda Singh Bahadur, 
when they gave their shahidi price was put on six head by the mughals saying that whoever would bring a head of a of a khalsa a head of a sikh they would get money and it was during this time where you can you will realize that a lot of pant a lot of the khalsas a lot of the sikhs actually went into hiding into the jungle this was the period of pai taru singh ji pai mati das ji pai taru singh ji who would go into the jungles and give food and other things to these khalsa who would hide in the jungle per os vele sangh ji think about it who were actually in charge of taking care of the gurdwaras of the dharmsali because by then we had kartarpur sahib we had khadur sahib we had goindwal sahib we had harmandir sahib already akal takht was already there anandpur sahib was already there we also had guru granth sahib ji so is sochan wali gala who were taking care of them when the sikhs went into hiding when sikhs were being killed and this was it was during this time where the udasis the mahans they were given the duties the responsibility to to take care of the gurdwara to run the gurdwara the taramsala based on sikhi principles and after that we have the dal khalsa period under nawab kapoor singh ji and then the missile period where maharaja ranjit singh ji comes in and then the khalsa raj under maharaja ranjit singh ji now maharaja ranjit singh ji under the khalsa raj under his empire Maharaja Ranjit Singh ji has done a lot of seva as well. He reconstructed a lot of gurdwaras. Even Harmandir Sahib that we see now, Sangha ji, the gold that is on Darbar Sahib was actually put up by Maharaja Ranjit Singh ji. And then it was during that time where Maharaja Ranjit Singh ji would go to each gurdwaras and he would meet these mahants and ask them, "What is it that the gurdwara needs? Does it need money? Does it need land to sustain the gurdwara to do the seva?" and that's when maharaja ranjit singh ji actually attached a lot of zameen a lot of land to each of these gurdwaras so gurdwara nankana sahib actually had 19000 acres of land attached to it sochan wali gal when you have a land such big land and you are the only one in charge of it and you do not have to answer to anybody as a human being you are there's bound to be greed and selfishness in there you will start having greed and you want to ensure that this power remains within your hand remains with you this was one of the issue with the mahans during that time now during the time of maharaja ranjit singh ji the mahans still continued taking care of the gurdwaras but the issue this time was that they were not following the sikh principles in taking care of the gurdwaras they were not doing what it should be done in a gurdwara so the sanctity of the gurdwaras were destroyed they were following more of the hindu rituals which we do not practice in a gurdwara and they were not even believing guru nanak dev ji they were doing things that one would not even think of doing in gurdwara and in any gurdwara and i will give you an example how things got bad especially in gurdwara nankana sahib so if we look at during the british raj the british when they came in they took over punjab from maharaja ranjit singh ji they actually first thing they did was to take control of the gurdwaras sochan wali gala why why would they want to do that even the khalsa raj sangh ji was the last raj punjab was the last thing the british could win over british was so scared of the sikhs they were so powerful and the sikhs the british they even sent their people to punjab to darbar sahib to find out do research that why is this khalsa so powerful why aren't we able to go through them why can't we take over their land they found out that a lot of our strength the strength of the sikh pant the khalsa pant comes from gurbani what binds us together sangha ji in this pant in this world even though we are diaspora sikhs we are away from punjab but what binds us 
throughout the world is Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj. Our Bani. And one way they wanted to control the Sikhs after winning the Raj was that to control these Gurdwaras. Why? Because number one, there was a lot of land and money attached to the Gurdwara. So there was the first reason, greed. Second was that the British were so afraid of Sikhs gathering together and planning on how to get freedom, on how to get independence from the British Raj. So to avoid any gatherings from happening, they took control of the Gurdwaras and even created bills and laws that forbid any gatherings allowed. And how we know that? We can see that during the Jallianwala Bagh massacre. So how did the British Raj then took control of the Gurdwaris? They appointed their own admins. Can you imagine, Sangaji, that the, the administration, the government, the governing of Darbar Sahib and Akal Takht Sahib was given to Agora? Agora, who doesn't know anything about Sikh Itihas, doesn't know anything about what took place in Darbar Sahib, is managing the whole Pant. The Akal Takht Sangaji in our Sikh Itihas, basically, Akal Takht is the place that sends out Hukam Namis to not just India, not just Punjab, but the whole worldwide. So wherever we are in Malaysia, in UK, in Canada, when, when Akal Takta releases a Hukam Nama, every Sikh, every Gurdwara around the world has to follow. That was the greatest thing that the British was afraid of, that once a Hukam Nama is out from Akal Takta, that we are going to fight independence from the British, then the Sikhs are not going to back off. So imagine the governing of Akal Takht in Darbar Sahib and many other main Gurdwaras such as Nankana Sahib was given to British administration. And they got together with the Mahans. They bribed them, built good relations with the Mahans for the same reason as well because many Gurdwaras, the main Gurdwaras were under the Mahans. And so they took control over the Mahans promised them land, even put some lands under their own name, under the Mahan's name, so the Mahan would only answer to the British and not to anyone else. And so if anything happens, the British and the Mahan's have the support of each other. This was the time in 1920 when the Gurdwara reform movement started. And it was also called the Akali movement. This was the time, Sangaji, when SGPC, Shiromani Gurdwara Prabhanta Committee was formalized. The Shiromani Akali Dal was from, formalized. So Shiromani Akali Dal is basically now the political party in Punjab. Shiromani Gurdwara Prabhanta Committee is basically that body, that organization now that controls the Gurdwara's management. So basically, Gurdwaras are answerable to SGPC. Why this movement started? First of, all, first of all, the Mahans, they gained the British protection. So basically, whatever they were doing before this, now they had more leverage to do all these things that were against Sikhi. They lived lavishly. Whatever money, revenue was coming from the Gurdwara, from the land, the property attached to the Gurdwara was all entering the Mahan's pockets. They were not going to the Sikhs. And some of the lands, like I mentioned, they were transferred to the name of the Mahans. And that is not right because they should belong to the Gurdwara. Just like how Nankana Sahib initially was Rai Poiki Talwandi. And Rai Bular, who was the owner of that whole land during the time of Guru Nanak Dev Ji, before he passed away, he gave that whole land to Guru Nanak Dev Ji. So some of these Mahans then claim ownership to a Gurdwara. Ehone Mera Gurdwara. So Mera Ra Chalu. Think about it, Sandhaji. A Gurdwara, meaning Guru the Dwar, the door to the Guru, the house of the Guru, 
and now we are claiming that e mera ghar this is my place i can do what i wish and they went against the key principles so the aim of this gurdwara reform movement was number 1 there must be a proper management of the gurdwara and we have to take the gurdwaras back from these mahans because now the sikhs that there's no jang jud anymore the sikhs are living independently in their houses in the villages in the district in the states and so the sikhs should be the one managing the gurdwaras and managing gurdwaras based on sikhi principles and so that was the aim number one to free the gurdwaras from these mahans from the british and number two was the fight for independence against british so a lot of actually sikhs got together during this time there was a lot of newspaper a lot of um, magazines articles that were written and a lot of prachar was being done it was during this time sangha ji where the british realized that there's a lot of movement coming from the sikhs that a lot of sikhs are gathering together what are they discussing what are they planning and when sikhs get together and start planning sari duniya kam jandi hai even the british they started shaking that was when they released a bill called the rollat bill which forbids any gathering and if gathering does take place then the british has whatever they were given all leverage and power to do whatever they have to this was in 1919 where a Jal- where the jallianwala bagh massacre took place within just outside the complex of harmandir sahib now if you go to harmandir sahib you enter darbar sahib just outside by the shops you will see the entrance to the jallianwala bagh andar ja ke dekho sangha ji we have been there we have seen each bullet mark on the brick in in the well on the wall sikhs were there gathering peacefully bas aam ji mein sikh ghumde phirde hai just imagine now we are in a park we are just walking around imagine sangha ji that we have a youth camp just like how in malaysia we have a camp a sammelan in december and we almost have a crowd up till 1000 people and just because a bill was passed the government the british government has the leverage has the power to just open fire and kill all the sikhs in that park that was that what happened what took place at jallianwala bagh sikhs were jumping into the well to save their lives but koi nahi bachya that was when the sikhs stood up and said that this is it we are not going to keep quiet so they got together the sikhs got together and with this movement they were successful in getting back darbar sahib the government the governing authority of darbar sahib and akal takht and when they were able to get this it was so much easier to establish sgpc and akali dal so that they can go around each district in punjab to save and take back all the other gurdwaras as well so how then from occupying or from taking back over akal takht which is the highest authority in khalsa pant in the sikh pant worldwide then a lot of hukumnames and orders were given out by the leaders of the movement to all the sikhs that wherever we were in the district wherever we were living to free the gurdwaras and to even ensure that the gurdwaras are being managed properly so now we are coming to closer to nankana sahib so can you see sangha ji how such a big movement from the time of the guru saiban the gurdwara management and then issues with the masanda and then the the khalsa raj period where sikhs went into hiding the mahans came in mahans corruption and in fighting against british winning akal takht and darbar sahib now the sikhs having the highest authority now they're going into districts and saving the gurdwaras so a lot of sikhs they form little little jathes chote chote jathe bana ke they would go to these gurdwaras like 
Govindwal Sahib, Guru Ka Bagh, you know, and trying to either peaceful, do peaceful protest and confront the Mahanta to either give them the keys back peacefully or they were going to use force. So many of these Mahans, they were scared of the Sikhs, so they quietly gave over the keys of the Gurdwaras back to the Panth. But it was during the time of Mahant Niran Das, who was a Mahant in Gurdwara Nankana Sahib, he was one of the Mahant who refused to return the keys and the authority of Gurdwara Nankana Sahib back to the Sikh Pant. And in the year 1920s, leading to 1921, many Jathes led by Pai Lachmin Singh Ji, Pai Kartar Singh Ji, they used to do peaceful protest back and forth to Nankana Sahib so that they could try to convince Mahan Narendas to return the keys back to the Panth. What would Mahan Narendas do that the situation got very bad? Mahan Narendas, like I mentioned earlier, where all the Mahans were going against the Sikh principles and not even practicing Sikhi, Mahan Narendas was one of that Mahant who did the most unthinkable thing in Gurdwara Nankana Sahib where he would rape girls and he even bring in dancing girls as well nearby that complex and into the Gurdwara, Gundenu Lekeona, bringing in hooligans, his own people, destroying the sanctity of Gurdwara Nankana Sahib, which is the birthplace of Guru Nanak Dev Ji. The Sikhs in that area could not stand such a biadbi to the birthplace of Guru Nanak Dev Ji that they kept on protesting to pressure Mahan Narendas to give the keys back to the Pant. Many times, SGPC tried setting up meetings with, with him so that, you know, this could be handled peacefully, but he didn't even turn up to the meeting. And in fact, this was now leading up to February 1921, where a lot of secret meetings were taking, were taking place. Mahan Narendas would be traveling to meet other Mahans and secretly planning to kill the Sikhs, whichever Sikhs that would turn up in, in Gurdwara Nankana Sahib and try to take the keys away from him or try to remove him from the Gurdwara. He was willing to kill the Sikhs. Means, Odi Zamirta Mari Gaisidi at that point. And the Mahant, you can see in the picture, sitting with the British, the one seated on the chair on the right side, that's Mahan Narendas. The day of the Sakka. This is a very powerful quote or a statement that was made by the Sikh who was going to, towards Gurdwara Nankana Sahib on the day of 20th February. The prayers having already been said and the action plan having already been decided with Guru's word, it is now imperative to move forward. The Sikhs have actually done Ardas. Hukam nama leke Guru Sada Asra takke. They marched towards Gurdwara Nankana Sahib. What happened? A few days leading up to the day of the Nankana Sahib. So this is where now we're going to focus on the Sakka. We're going to focus on the day where the Sikhs came to Gurdwara and Athin Shahidi. On the 16th of February, the SGPC and the Kali movement leaders, they got information that the Mahant would not be in the Gurdwara compound on the 20th February. He was going to go for a meeting. In fact, it was during March, March 3rd, 4th, 5th, where the leader, the Akali movement leader, were trying to set up a meeting with Mahan Narendas, but he refused. So they had to bring all the meeting and the protest forward into February. So on the 16th, it was decided by the leaders of the movement that Pai Kartar Singh Ji and Pai Lachman Singh Ji would lead their jathas and march peacefully 
into the Gurdwara compound of Nankana Sahib and try to confront or oh, if Mahan Narendra is not there to actually take the Gurdwara in his absence. So there would be no fight and seeing the Sikhs in the Gurdwara compound in such a big number, perhaps the Mahanta would not do anything and he would agree to step down. On the 19th of February, so this was decided that early morning of the 20th February was when the Sikhs would march to Gurdwara and Nankana Sahib. But late on the 19th of February, late in the day, the Akali movement leaders, they got the news that the Mahant has cancelled his plan on the 20th and was actually planning to kill the Sikhs that would march on that day to the Gurdwara complex. Hearing this news, Pai Kartan Singh Ji was there. The Kali leaders, the movement leaders, they decided to stop the march, the peaceful protest, to cancel the plan. And Pai Kartar Singh Ji was given the orders and he followed the orders. But when the messenger was sent to Pai Lachman Singh and his Jatha to stop the protest, stop moving to Gurdwara Nankana Sahib, it was already too late for them. Pai Lachman Singh, on the 20th morning, and his jatha of 200 seats. They said that we have already done ardas, we have already taken Hukam Namasai from Guru Granth Sahib Ji. And once we have done that, we cannot go back, we cannot turn back anymore. The Hukam Namasai from Guru Granth Sahib Ji tells us that we have to move forward and we are not going to step down. Whatever happens, the Guru will protect us. But we have to see an end to this. So Pai Lachman Singh Ji and his Jatha of 200 Sikhs, they reached the Gurdwara early morning. The Mahant was not there. He was not present there. So a lot of the Sikhs, they sat in the Darbar Sahib they sat in the Darbar Sahib and Pai Lachman Singh Ji was seated on the top bear of Guru Granth Sahib Ji. Many of the Sikhs were outside, some doing seva, some doing parkarma, some sitting down listening to Kirtan. Just a brief moment to be with your Guru. But sadly, Sangha Ji, they didn't know that the Mahant and his men, the hooligans, they were already on the rooftop of the Gurdwara and many outside the wall of the Gurdwara with their guns pointing inwards. And seeing the opportunity, the Mahant, the Mahant Narendas and his people, he ordered open fire to the 200 Sikhs in the Darbar complex. The Sikhs got shot. Many of the Sikhs got shot. The, the guns from top, they were shooting bullets towards the Sikhs, whichever Sikhs were outside. And those that was on the ground, they were running inside. smashed open the door of the Darbar Sahib and killed all those Sikhs that were sitting in the Darbar Sahib. Imagine this, Sangaji. Imagine sitting in a tabya of Guru Granth Sahib Ji, looking in front and you're seeing the door open wide and people with guns pointing at you, shooting everyone. It was the instinct of Pai Lachman Singh Ji to quickly cover Guru Granth Sahib Ji's saroop with his body. Idda hatta filar ke Pai Sahib ne Guru Sahib upar to protect Guru Granth Sahib Ji and Pai Lachman Singh Ji got shot. But sadly, Sangha Ji, even Guru Granth Sahib Ji got shot as well. Sochan wali galaya how much pain the Sankat must have gone through seeing that their Guru has been shot. 
when guru gobind singh ji was stepped by the two muslims when guru sahib was resting in his tent in huzur sahib the sikhs in that instant they got together and they, they tried to grab hold of the of the guy of the man who stepped guru gobind singh ji doctors were brought in to treat guru gobind singh ji and all the sikhs were so afraid that guru sahib ko kuch ho na jaye please guru sahib don't leave us and go how much pain they went through seeing that when guru gobind singh ji let go in error and the wound opened seeing that guru sahib now saying that don't do anything it's my time to go how much pain by mati das ji by sati das ji by dayala ji would have gone through seeing their guru guru tegh bahadur ji in prison in such a small cell with with spikes pointing inwards how much pain you think sangat ji sai mia meer ji and the other sangat who were present in lahore having to see guru arjan dev ji maharaj sitting in a tatti tavi and this was now guru granth sahib ji which is why we say sangat ji jag di jyot sarup guru granth sahib ji that the jyot of the than guru saiban is in guru granth sahib ji and on this day 20th february guru granth sahib ji was shot kera sik chup baithuga pai lachman singh ji was shot guru granth sahib ji marat nu vi chaddya guru sahib was also shot and whichever seek that was alive these people the mahans people they took their swords and they started slaughtering the sikhs pai lachman singh ji he was dragged he was hung upside down on a tree and he was burned alive many of the sikhs were burned alive the mahant say that koi sikh nu vini chadna whichever sikh is still breathing kill him there and then koi bach ke na jaave and nobody should even be going out of this gurdwara complex and telling anyone whatever has taken place in this gurdwara but the sikhs found out the news spread really fast that the 200 sikhs that were in nankana sahib gurdwara they have been killed and onnane sare ne shahidi pa li pai kartar singh ji hearing this news he gathered thousands of sikhs it is said that 2200 sikhs or even more sangat ji with pai kartar singh ji they marched to gurdwara nankana sahib and the deputy commissioner and the commission of lahore mr king they also came to gurdwara nankana sahib pai kartar singh ji was face to face with mr king and this is what he said he said it's either you hand us the keys of the gurdwara give the gurdwara back to the pant and take mahant narendas and punish him or it is us who are going to give our lives here now and you're going to see more bloodshed happening at that time the commission the commission of lahore the news even went to the to london the news even reached to delhi and they got so much criticism from the british government on what took place on that day in sang in nankana sahib so on the 21st of february the keys of gurdwara nankana sahib was given back to the pant and pai kartar singh ji and the sikhs they cremated the shaheeds of gurdwara nankana sahib they cremated the shaheeds 
of the Saka. And that tree, Sangaji, where Pai Lachman Singh Ji was hung and burned, you can still see that until today. This Sarup now, the Sarup of Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj, currently the Shahid Bir of Sakkan and Kana Sahib, it's now currently being restored. Maram Patti Di Seva Ho Raya. Even the Sarup of 1984, the Guru Granth Sahib Ji of 1984, that was also shot. Even that Sarup is being restored and conservation seva is being taken place, which is, Sangaji, one of the very important seva that sadly is lacking in our panth. But it is very much needed. Because if we look at our kajana, if we look at the amount of treasure that we have in our sit panth, we have so many old potia, old grants, Manuscript, all handwritten surahs of Guru Granth Sahib Ji, Dasam Guru Granth Sahib Ji, even Gudke Sahib. And trust me, Sangaji, Ji, even in Malaysia, we still have handwritten surahs of Janam Sakya, of Gudke Sahib, that are even more than 100 years old, that belong to our grandparents, great grandparents. But sadly, another Kimatni Sanupata. The young generation, my generation, the generation after me, we do not know the value of these surubs, of these treasures that we have in the Panth. That's why the question comes in, why is our youth going further away from Sikhi? Like I mentioned earlier, when the British were trying to take over Punjab, was trying to take over the rule from Maharaja and Singh Ji, they were trying to figure out why is it so difficult? And they found the connection of the Khalsa of the Sikhs to Gurbani. It's the same now as well, Sangaji. Kuch badliani. So what is it now, Sangaji? Then, then what can we learn from this Sakha? The aftermath of Sakha and Ghana Sahib, the Sikhs got even stronger to take back all the main Gurdwaris from the hands of the British. Many meetings are set, set up that's when the Gurdwara Act was produced, was signed, was agreed upon by bro, both the British and the SGPC and the Kalidat. And now you can see, Sangaji, because of that period, because of what took place 100 years ago, now you can see where each Gurdwara, not just in Punjab, not just in India, but worldwide, you have a committee of the, in the Gurdwara. You have someone managing the Gurdwara. You have someone taking care of the accounts. And you have to be answerable to, the, to a cult. You have to be answerable to SGPC. You have to be answerable to the higher authority. So, I hope, Sangaji, that within this 100 years and even moving forward, that this system would not be corrupted just like how the Masand system and the Mahan system was corrupted. But a Maradi Kirpa, Maraj Kirpa Karan, that things go well. So now, how can you relate this Saka, this event, this Itihasik event, personally, Panthic level, and not the worldwide Panth, but perhaps the Panthic level in your own area, in your own local? community. First of all, Sangaji, be in a management position in a Gurdwara, being a Pardhan, a Vice President, a Treasurer, or the uh, com committee member in general, it's not just a normal position, Sangaji. It is, for me, Sangaji, it's one of the highest position that one can be in terms of managing Gurdwara and not just the Gurdwara because Gurdwara is the central point of that local Sikh community. To see Deko, I'm talking about my country here, Malaysia. When our grandparents came, the Gurdwara is always built around the area of the local Sikh community. Wherever the Sikh community used to work, 
in the mind's area, that's where a Gurdwara will be built. Because a Gurdwara is always the center, the focal point of a Sikh community. And to be in a position where you manage a Gurdwara, you do seva of Guru Granth Sahib Ji and the Gurdwara, it's not, a light, it's not a position to be taken lightly. But sadly, Sandhuji, please don't take me in the wrong way. We all have to learn from this. Even it is a learning experience for me as well. We have to lose that ego when we're doing seva in a Gurdwara or for Gurdwara. Guru Sahib says, Satgur ki seva gakri, sir dije aap gawai, sir dije. Jodho asi gurdwari di seva karni ya, and maraj kirpa kar dene jodho sanu position mel dea in the management. Seva idda karni ya, that Guru Sahib ne sanu seva bakshi ya, sir dije. Pella apna sir dena, when we give our head, when Guru Sahib says sir dije, it's telling us that Jari Sadi Mateya O Guru Sahib Nu Deni Apna Sarvi Dena Te Sarvi Vich Jari Which our mind Even that has to be given to the Guru Aap Gawai Lose that Appa Lose that That ego That I am the one running the Gurdwara I am the one making the decision Because when we come into that position then things are definitely going to go wrong. Being in a committee, Sangaji, being in a very high position in a Gurdwara, managing the Gurdwara, the, the purpose of a Gurdwara needs to be identified. What is the purpose of a Gurdwara? We have Guru Granth Sahib Ji in every Gurdwara. Which means that this is the central point for the Sikhs to get together, to have gatherings, to make Pantic decisions, to solve problems, to help the Pantic. Then the question needs to be asked is that, is this Gurdwara serving its purpose? Yes or no? Sadly, Sangaji, I can't speak for it. For every place but then there's many places where even youth have stopped going to the Gurdwara. Many say I don't see the need to go to a Gurdwara. I can just do Pagdi from home. There was people like me. So I also had that ego. That Gurdwara jaanti lower niya kare ke Pagdi kar because there's too much politics going on in the Gurdwara. This is what we always say. There's too much politics going on. If there is too much politics going on, then why aren't we going to the Gurdwaras and addressing it? Then many have said that, oh, I do not want to be involved with the Gurdwara politics. I do not want to take a position. Think about this, Sandhuji. Many of those who are actually in the management position, in the committee of a Gurdwara, they are all old people. Our generation, our parents, our grandparents even, they are still managing the Gurdwara. Who will take responsibility of the Gurdwaras then? Are we going to keep calling people from India? Are we going to then get foreign workers to, con to control or take over the Langar? which I've seen that happening as well. Sadly, even Langar say, we, have, we do not have our own youth, our own people trying to take over Langar Sewa that we have to call foreign workers from outside. The older generation, this is my bane too. The older generations that are currently in the management position of the Gurdwaras, they should be preparing the youth to take over the management of the Gurdwara. And the youth, the bainti to the youth is that not to completely ignore the Gurdwara and say that I would rather do my Pagdi at home, which is not wrong. But why would Guru Nanak Dev Ji create a Taramsala? Why would Guru Angad Dev Ji go to Khadur Sahib and create a Taramsala? Because Gurdwara is the point, the place where we can get together and do Sangat and get inspiration. So the youth must be open-minded that it is going to be our turn 
to take over the care of a gurdwara. So start thinking of plans. If we have issue with the way a gurdwara is running, what can we do about it? So now that this year, in 2021, many of the countries are still in lockdown since last year, 2020. And many of the Sangat, including myself, we have started realizing how important a Gurdwara is now for us. Chaid e Guru Samne Sanu, the Kona Siga, that now how important a Gurdwara is for us. Loki Tarsadeya Hona, Gurdwara Jan, Guru Sabe Darshan Karan. In the future now, this is what the plan or the planning should come in is that what can we do now to cater for the youth that's about to come into the Gurdwara after the lockdown is lifted? What kind of parchar should be done that the youth get more inspired and build their connection with Guru Granth Sahib Ji? How can we make this Gurdwara more focal, more central point for the seats that every event they would want to do it in the Gurdwara rather than having parties in the pubs and clubs. So these are the things that we need to, we need to think about. It's so sad, Sandhidhi, that we have seen Gurdwaras that doesn't, there's, there's Guru Granth Sahib Ji there, but Granth Singh we hang. And when we tried calling and calling, there's no numbers that was written in the Gurdwara board, on the Gurdwara board, you can't reach those numbers. How are we going to then do Seva of Guru Granth Sahib Ji? What if something was to take place? What if an emergency was to take place? And how could, then how could we bring Guru Granth Sahib Ji out of that area, out of that Gurdwara? Who does a Seva of Guru Granth Sahib Ji then? Things that needs to be thought, maybe the youth now is questioning that I'm too free. I do not know what to do. How can I connect back to Sikhi? First of all, Start learning the language of a guru. Learn Gurmukhi. Try to learn how to read Guru Granth Sahib Ji. Do your Santhya. Gurdwaras can even take such opportunity, initiative to teach the youth or the Sangat how to do Seva of Guru Granth Sahib Ji. So that let's say a time comes where we, we cannot have Granthi Singh. Just like in this period, about a year, many of the Granthi Singhs had to go back to India. So at that point, just like this Gurdwara that I'm in, they actually got the youth to come in and do Seva of Guru Granth Sahib Ji. So teach the youth. This is how you do Kamar Kasidi Seva. This is how you do Prakash Sukhasan Seva. Taki Jodo Sama Ave, the youth are able to take care and run the Gurdwaras. And we do not have to depend on anybody else. Only the Pantha takes care of the Gurdwaras. There's many things, just like I mentioned. So if the youth, this is one aspect, now the youth can take up the skill of learning, getting closer to your guru. Second thing, like I mentioned, the restoration seva, the conservation seva of Guru Granth Sahib Ji, this is a skill in the Panth that is very much lacking. There's only very few people in the Panth who's doing this seva. So maybe this is something that we want to take up. This is something we want to learn. Restoration seva, conservation seva, digitalization of the surup, of the manuscript. And I'm talking about where I am now in Malaysia. We have the archive museum where we can actually even go and do internship from. There's even an organization in the UK, Puti Seva, where you can also do internship. You can join their program and learn where do the materials come from, what papers do they use, what ink do they use, how do they bind the Putis together again. And you'll be surprised, Samuji, in your house, those who still have their grandparents or that who still have the treasures of their grandparents, you'll be surprised to see that your grandparents have brought this old potiyam with them from India. They are old Gurkhe Sahib, handwritten Gurkhe Sahib, or Janam Sakya, or other Itihasa Grants. And look at them. Try to appreciate that treasure because in the coming times, if these are not taken care of as well, then we're going to lose them. Then what is the coming generation, the future generation, the third, fourth generation in the future 
how are they going to connect to guru granth sahib ji then so there's so many things to think about there's so many learning points that we can get from this sakan and kana sahib that how now the pant has to move forward just like the sikhs did in 1920 if they had hadn't moved forward then shayad the gurdwaras would not be run as well as it is now so there's many things to think about and i hope that each one of us is asking this question i ask this question to myself as well and the question is what can i do to serve my pant we cannot do everything ek cheez bhi kar liye even based on what education we are doing or our occupation or wherever we are just ask us this question what can i do to serve my pant to serve my guru granth sahib ji and to serve the khalsa pant what can i do and every little step makes a very big difference and we know that from this reform movement such a small step of cease gathering and starting a movement and such a big difference it made even until 100 years later so i hope that we have learned a lot from this itihas and there's many more sakas that we need to be actually learning from but this should be a starting point for us to start doing research and start learning our itihas so please forgive me for any mistakes that i've made pul chuk di khima karni gajwa chike aankho wahe guru ji ka khalsa wahe guru ji ki fateh guru wahe if you enjoyed this video please like comment share and subscribe please donate and help spread guru ji's message link is in the description below wahe guru ji ka khalsa wahe guru ji ki fateh wahe guru